if you want to start off. I, I, we'll I won't talk too long because I'm really here to answer your questions more than just to, yeah. to speak. But I thought it would be helpful just for one or two minutes uh, to summarize a couple of things. And I appreciate, yes, I am here as a private citizen on my own time. Uh, and really, I'm here to help you understand, hopefully, the role I played you know, from 2003 to, to, and before to 2011, earlier this year, and to try to clear up some confusion that's apparent to me um, has taken place. So I appreciate the opportunity. Um, w what I gave you was something that I wrote up a few weeks ago, primarily, and I had already given it to the Board of Finance Subcommittee, um, mm -hmm. but I want, and I had emailed it to some RTM leaders, but I wanted to provide it for your committee since the RTM has set up a committee. And, uh, and I'll just take a quick minute and a half to summarize it. And it really gets to the heart of the question that Hal asked a few minutes ago. You know, how do we kind of get from here to there? Um, as you can imagine, I worked very hard on this project for many years. Uh, this project is uh, near and dear. I created the concept for this project. I got the state to agree to build this train station in my first term. And, and then when we ended up negotiating a three-party contract after the first version of the three-party contract, which had been done in Mr. Mitsopoulos' tenure, because that's when Black Rock Realty bought the property. Um, we tried to structure it as best we could. A lot of it had been written in the previous term, but we restructured it as best we could. The, the highlights that I guess I'd just like to mention is a quick summary of the financials. Hal asked, how did we get the cost so much higher? And I think it's a key component. There was an estimate that the town was going to have to spend about six million dollars back in 2003. And if you look back at the minutes of those meetings, and many of you weren't on the RTM then, but if you look back at what was discussed then, roughly out of that six million dollars, there were estimates for the train station, the parking lot for the train station, to cost roughly around two and a half million dollars, give or take a little bit. There were estimates for the off-site improvements to cost roughly around two million dollars that were spelled out back then, give or take a few dollars. And then there was about a million and a half dollars estimated for the environmental cleanup activities on the parking land, which included demolishing the factory, of which the town had to pay 650000 under that 2003 agreement. What's so frustrating to all of us, to me, to you, is that those costs changed so dramatically from 2003 to now. Um, <coughs> oil was $25 a barrel. Uh, you know, now it's $100 a barrel. Paving costs have more than doubled over this eight years. Almost every component of this project saw the costs skyrocket over the course of this time. So by the time the project started imploding in 2008 and 2009, and some of you will recall there were many uh, months and years of delay to get all the permits required to start construction for the project. And some of you <coughs> remember reading that Black Rock Realty was chomping at the bit to start work on the project in 2005 and 2006. But we got through a per permitting period that was very difficult. And when all those permits were finally issued by 2007, there then was a period of time where the developer had issues that led to losing their financing during the Great Recession. Um, in 2008, they came to the town and they said, hey, here's the situation. All that money that we had borrowed back in 2003 that we would have had available to do this work if we had been able to do it, if we had gotten our permits on time, that money's not there anymore. And that led to another almost two year delay. Nothing was happening from 2008 to 2010, uh, except the costs kept escalating because inflation kept going up. I gave you here in this first page a kind of estimate, and this is my own estimate, of what those costs today are now versus what we expected that six million to be in 2003. And if you look at the sheets that the current first selectman has given out, uh, you'll see how much more the parking lot alone is costing the town between the parking lot, the utilities, some of the retaining walls. The cost that we had estimated that I was fearful of, if we had gone forward with just what we had to do in that original contract, we're, we're approaching 15 to 17 million dollars. Now, it, I did not go around town talking about those numbers a year and a half ago because, frankly, I didn't want to have to say, oh my gosh, we were going to have to bond more than 10 million dollars more. What I did was I said to town officials, I'm going to try to get grants. And over a three year period, in the case of the intersection project, it's a perfect example. The four million dollars almost that we got, those were grants that I single handedly 
work for two years to get. I approached my colleagues at the Greater Bridgeport Planning Council at the MPO that I co-chaired and was chair of and vice chair, and I begged and said, we need money for this project. And I got them to give us the hour money. It had to be approved by our group before the DOT even knew about it. And I convinced them to get that money. I convinced them to give us this surface transportation program money. All those federal monies were a result of my work. And Bill and Rich can tell you, we had meetings where I would go to them and say, how much do you think it's gonna cost of going back to the MPO to, to try to get more money? And as that project got more expensive, we went back three times to seek more money. Um, and I know that recently they've tried to do that again. But none of that grant money was known in 2003. You know, the town had that risk. <clears throat> there was some belief, maybe by some, that the town talked about bonding $6 million, so we were limited and didn't have any more risk. That wasn't true. Every town official that voted on this project in 2003 voted on an agreement that said the town shall do and perform all acts and things necessary and appropriate to secure any and all funding that may be required to ensure the completion of all the town improvements set forth in that agreement. It also said that the town can't delay the project, that the project has to be done according to the project schedule even though the parties agreed to change that schedule. So all these things I'm talking about, the off-site improvements, the parking lot almost tripling in cost, the grading of the parking lot that nobody thought about <coughs> when it was negotiated eight years ago because nobody focused on the contours of the site because we didn't have a design plan. We were just trying to get the state to approve going forward with the train station. So all those costs became part of this project over time. It wasn't anybody's fault. It wasn't anybody's intention. It was a fact of a major complex project and how complex it really was and when the rubber hit the road, what these things ended up being. So we faced a situation where if we did not approach the state in 2010, we would have had the risk of paying 10 to $12 million more in funding. And that can be documented, you know, soup to nuts. So I went to the state, you know, the, the entire state delegation went to the state and we all started asking. Um, and we all worked together to try to do that. And those of you that were on town bodies then remember that when we did announce you know, that the state was giving us $19 million. Uh, most people were pretty happy about that because the project was, you know, dead in the water, stopped in its tracks. It was just not happening. Um, so the three quick things that I'll just finish and then really I wanted to let you ask all the questions you want. Um, but the three quick things that I just want to mention about that agreement. Um, when the state gave that $19 million, it was based on about a three-month effort to develop a revised up-to-date budget for the project. That budget, and it's actually in a document that I passed out to you, that it was part of the state ag aid agreement. That estimated total came to twenty-nine million six hundred thousand six hundred forty thousand dollars. That was the budget that the state, the town, and Black Rock Realty negotiated on when we negotiated seeking more money. The town had approximately five million dollars at that time left in our bank account from the original six million dollar bond. We had only spent a million dollars, about a million one. The state and the town asked Black Rock Realty for more money. The town and Black Rock asked the state for more money. And what we ended up negotiating was an agreement uh, a, in the form of two documents that one was a grant agreement between the town and the state. And that agreement gave the town $19.4 million of additional money. That $19 million was to pay for all the town costs that we projected which again, we thought were 10 to $12 million above the $6 million. So out of that $19 million, about half the money was covering all the town costs that we now thought we had to complete this project on time and on budget. The rest of the money was spent, was being allocated to do public work that the state agreed was public work that originally had been Black Rock Realty's responsibilities under the three-party agreement and Black Rock Realty agreed to give more money toward that public work. So Black Rock Realty originally was going to do the cleanup of a lot of the site, was going to do the regrading, was going to move the dirt around. All that stuff now had to be done a different way. The state and town felt with Black Rock potentially out of money that we had no choice but to do it with public parties. And the state informed us that they couldn't do the work as much as I would have loved to have them do this work because they were not a party to any of the permits 
that took four years to get. So the DEP permits, the Army Corps of Engineers, the Conservation Commission permits, they were all in the name of the town of Fairfield and Black Rock Realty, not the state of Connecticut. The state would have had to start a whole nother round of permitting if they were to try to do it. So they said, we're not going to do that. That's going to delay this project another two or three years. We need to give you town Fairfield the money, and we'll come up with a budget. And we ended up negotiating a budget that we believed would cover the cost. It's so frustrating to, in the last three months to have this cost, unfortunately, go beyond what was expected. Um, but that's the way it is. Uh, I gave you the report, the last report I got when I was in office. I have emails from Mark Barnhart that I can share with you. There was no cost overrun known at the time I was in office. We bid the project and it came in over $4 million below the budget, that $29 million budget. So when I went to the RTM, and many of you heard me, we were $4 million below budget a year ago versus what we expected based on the bids. And we thought we were in very good shape. As the project went along, there were change orders. But the change orders that took place, which I thought, and I truly did believe this, you know, Scout's honor, all the things that they projected out through completion, I mean, I asked as many questions as anybody else in this room, to the contractors, to Mark, to the others, about what the risks were to try to see if we were in budget. I was determined to stay in budget, and I was ready to cut things out of the project to stay in budget. We were still in budget, even though we were a lot closer when I gave my last report to the RTM. And if some of you listen to the tape, you, you'll actually hear me mention there was some dirt that we found in one part of the site that was, that was tricky that we were encountering. But those costs were factored into that last report, and it still showed we were somewhere between a half, in my, around a half a million dollars under budget. Um, and, and Mark's estimate showed through completion the town was going to spend $4.4 million out of the $5 million. Um, the cost side showed that the total costs of the project in that report were $29 million. We had a 29-6 budget, so that showed a $600,000 under budget. And I understand some of what's happened since, but I haven't been here, so obviously, as, as David said, I can't talk to it. I, you know, I don't have you know, that information. But um, did some of those seem, things start getting, should we have realized there could have been risk at that point? Perhaps. I can't tell you sitting here that I wouldn't have wanted another million dollars of contingency. But all I could do was go as we were going with the work we had. And I can tell you my last four weeks, I was working a lot more on some other things, good things in fact, and wasn't really worried about this except for one issue. And that issue had to do with a dispute with Black Rock Realty over about four or 5,000 yards of that dirt that was under a building area that Black Rock Realty was supposed to build that I felt that we felt that, it, that, the, that we sent the letter to Black Rock Realty saying we don't believe that's our obligation. Uh, that was on April 15th. But that cost of moving all that and dealing with it, even though we believed it was their responsibility, we had factored that cost and Mark had put that cost into the last report that I got in April. So, um, you know, I, I know there are other things you want to ask about. I, I, I took more than two minutes. I'd be happy to try to answer the questions you have and to try to go through this as best I can.